Question number three, Phil Twyford. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is for the Minister responsible for Housing New Zealand Corporation. How many Housing New Zealand properties does he intend to sell during this term, and what is the projected number of houses Housing New Zealand will own in three years' time as a result? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister responsible for Housing New Zealand, no target has been set for sales or for the size of the Housing New Zealand stock in three years. Instead, the government is focused on what is actually the most important part, which is meeting the needs of the most vulnerable families. We're doing that by investing $718 million in the income-related rent subsidy this year. That's nearly $200 million more than five years ago and forecast to increase another $160 million in the next three years. We're committing to growing the social housing sector by opening up the income-related rent subsidy to community housing providers and by redeveloping housing New Zealand properties to get more houses in the right place and the right type instead of what we currently have, in which a third of the housing New Zealand stock is in the wrong place, the wrong type, or with mismatched tendencies. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Why did the government not tell New Zealanders before the election that they intended to privatise a large part of the state housing stock? And how many of Housing New Zealand's frail, elderly, vulnerable and at-risk tenants will be displaced due to his asset sale cash grab? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister Responsible for Housing New Zealand, I completely reject uh, the characterisations. I think there's about three of them in that member's question. But I would draw his attention in terms of the, uh, the, this, the question about uh, pre-election announcements. This is a, uh, a document from the National Party, actually, which is a social housing policy, which I think was released um, at the time of the National Party's campaign opening. And it says, reform social housing sector. This is right at the top, by the way. Reform social housing sector to ensure it is fit for purpose, including passing legislation to facilitate a shift from state housing to a range of new social housing providers. A, 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 let me repeat that for the member. To facilitate a shift from state housing to a range of new social housing providers. If the member would like me to get a copy of it for him, I'd be more than happy to pass it across. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. How does he reconcile his statement about the proceeds of state house sales that, and I quote, if we want less stock, there's not much point in rebuilding stock with it? How does he reconcile that with statements by the other two ministers of housing um, who say they want to increase social housing stock? Honourable Stephen Joyce. Well, uh, on behalf of the Minister responsible for housing New Zealand, this is, I think, the nub of the question. Uh, the member doesn't seem to uh, recognise that actually social housing can be provided by other entities than Housing New Zealand. So for some ministers to say we want to increase the amount of social housing stock is entirely consistent with discussing a change in how much Housing New Zealand has, provided you don't expect that Housing New Zealand has to be the monopoly provider of all social housing stock in New Zealand. It has been historically. And I think if the member looks back, he'll find that it hasn't been a complete solution, that most other countries do it differently. And in New Zealand, this government is open to different ways of providing more social housing for more New Zealanders. Supplementary. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. How many of the over 5,500 people in desperate need of a home and currently on the Housing New Zealand waiting list, many living in cars or campgrounds, will be housed as a result of his State House sell-off. Hon. Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister for Housing New Zealand, I think, again, the problem with the member's question is the, 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 the pejorative way he talks about how the, state, the social housing mix should be in this country. Actually, we're very keen to ensure that there are more opportunities for more people to access social housing, which is exactly why we're making the changes that we're making, because if the member looks back in the history of New Zealand, he'll find that a monopoly housing New Zealand provider has never solved the problem of availability of social housing. Supplementary, Mr Speaker. Supplementary question, Phil Twyford. Will he guarantee that no money raised from Housing New Zealand sales will go into the Consolidated Fund? And if not, will any of the funds raised by evicting tenants and selling off state houses end up in the so-called Future Fund to help subsidise irrigation schemes for hard-up farmers? Well, there's the attack of the 
on uh, Honourable Stephen Joyce. Uh, Mr Speaker, on behalf of the Minister responsible for Housing New Zealand, the member shows, uh, I don't know, a level of imagination which is just a bit frightening, really. The reality is simply this. He's the, not the parking the, camp, that's for sure. The government is actually focused on lifting the amount of social housing. How much we put into the capital of social housing and how much we put into the income-related rents will be entirely driven by our determination to see more access for social housing for New Zealanders. Exactly how that's done will unfold quite visibly in the next three years. Question number four. Jackie Dean. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister of Health and asks, what is the government doing to provide faster cancer services for New Zealanders? Uh, Mr. Honourable Dr Jonathan.